quick follow-up regarding this week's video on the main channel about how delays in NATO entry bizarrely help Ukraine. Specifically, any delay increases Ukraine's short-run bargaining position on territory that the country can secure in ceasefire negotiations now. The basic argument was that, because Russia is more likely to be able to meddle in Ukrainian affairs in the future, the Kremlin's desire to take as much land today does not seem to be as pressing. Well, today, I wanted to quickly walk through the mathematics of that claim, as well as highlight a point that I did not previously cover. I'd recommend that you go watch the original video first, but up to you if you just want to see some math. You are following a channel called Lines on Maps Extra, so you might be a mathemaniac. This is also an opportunity for you to see how the lines on maps get derived. Yes, hardcore lines on maps. So drop a comment below and let me know if you think this type of video is worthwhile. Anyway, let X represent the total amount of Ukrainian territory that Russia holds from a present-day ceasefire. Important for later, that value can be no less than zero, for zero percent of it, and no more than one, for 100 percent of it. Our goal for today is to understand whether this goes up or down as a function of Ukraine's probability of joining NATO. We will begin by calculating what Russia earns by fighting a war to the bitter end in the present. Let P represent the portion of Ukrainian territory that Russia expects to take by doing so. As I said, it is a portion, so it is also between 0 and 1. In the lines on map setting, this is equivalent to the percent of territory to the right of the white line. That might seem familiar because the white line represents the expected outcome. Meanwhile, let C represent Russia's cost of war, which is positive. It is not like a negative number of people are dying right now. Again, with lines on maps, that would be the distance between the white and red lines. We will suppose that fighting a war until a military defeat prevents Ukraine from joining NATO, thanks to that whole ongoing territorial dispute clause. Thus, Russia's payoff for a full war right now is just P minus C. With lines on maps once again, that would be everything to the right of the red line. Recall that X represents the proposed portion of Ukraine that Russia holds onto in a ceasefire. Since this is a temporary situation, we need to weigh how Russia values the short run versus the long run. We will do this with the scalar alpha. It is a value between 0 and 1. Alpha equal to 1 puts all of its weight on today, while alpha equal to 0 puts all of its weight on the future. So Russia's short run payoff for accepting a ceasefire is alpha times x. Note for later that 1 minus alpha is Russia's weight for the future. Next, we need some way to capture the likelihood that Ukraine eventually makes it into NATO. We will use the value q to do that. Because it is a probability, it is also constrained between 0 and 1. To be clear, this is a very simple way of thinking about the situation. It is not how I would formulate it if I were trying to publish a peer-reviewed article on the subject, but I would best leave that to my self-respecting academic alter ego. You would want discount factors, geometric series, and a bunch of other muck. The key thing is that this simple Q probability gets the point across. You could also consult the original article that the video was based on if you really care. Anyway, conditional on joining, we might imagine that NATO increases Ukraine's ability to hold territory. The value P sub NATO represents that, and since the expected outcome line is shifting eastward, the value of P sub NATO will be less than P. With actual lines on maps, that is because the post-NATO outcome shifts things to the right. As a result, Ukraine could hold Russia to P sub NATO minus C in a future where it is part of the alliance. But remember, that only happens Q portion of the time. It is also possible that the bid will fail. That happens 1 minus Q portion of the time, and when it does, Russia can keep holding on to whatever it was receiving before. Combine those together for Russia's expected post-ceasefire payoff, 
but weigh it according to its value for the future. And that gives us Russia's total ceasefire payoff. What Russia earns by fighting now, plus what Russia expects to earn later from a ceasefire. Let's make the math a bit easier going forward by assuming that NATO membership gives Ukraine complete sovereign security, such that P sub NATO minus C is equal to zero. That really cleans up the calculation. Now Russia prefers accepting the ceasefire proposal. If alpha times x plus 1 minus alpha times 1 minus q times x is greater than p minus c. Solve for x, and the minimum territory Russia would have to keep to stop fighting equals p minus c divided by 1 minus q times 1 minus alpha. First thing to note, when q is close to 1, Ukraine's entry into NATO is near certain. It is possible that the right-hand side under that circumstance is larger than 1, which corresponds to there being no ceasefire line that Russia would prefer to war. This captures the theory that Russia is fighting the war to prevent Ukraine's entry into NATO. If you ascribe to that belief, then we are basically done here. The ceasefire cannot happen, and so further discussions about how to structure it are meaningless. Personally, given where the NATO politics are involving Hungary and Turkey, and even the United States and Germany, I do not think that this is a plausible reason why the war is continuing through today. Maybe a plausible reason for why it started, but not its lack of resolution. Now, it is possible that the Kremlin will still refuse a ceasefire for other reasons. The math here just provides evidence that this will not be due to NATO politics. Given that, there will be a proposal that Russia would prefer to continuing the battle. Recall that we are interested in learning how that amount changes as a function of Q, the probability that Ukraine enters NATO. Well, the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to Q shows that it is increasing. Here is a sample plot to see that. The larger that Q is, the larger that the minimum value of X needs to be. Equivalently, the lower the odds that Ukraine joins NATO anytime soon, the more that Ukraine should be pushing back against Russia in the present. Now, are people in the Kremlin doing the math like we did here today? I do not know. But the calculations here were relatively simple. We were just internalizing different expectations over various possible war outcomes. And I can tell you for sure that the Kremlin does quite a bit of thinking about that subject. What our work today did was demonstrate that any coherent thought process on the subject would generate the aforementioned relationship. Meanwhile, if you are a glutton for punishment who already knows game theory, you can learn a lot more about these kinds of crisis bargaining dynamics by reading this book. Check the video description for more information about it, but be forewarned that it is intended for graduate students. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Take care.